cast your mind back with me to what you were doing November 2004. George W. Bush had just won re-election to presidency of the United States. Shania Twain was releasing her greatest hits album, which would go on to be the top album of 2005. And two massive sequel games were being released. Halo 2 and Need for Speed Underground 2 which for me still remains to this day my favorite driving video game I've ever played. And it still, 20 years later, shapes the decisions that I make around cars. I own a Nissan 350Z because of that game. In fact, I remember the day that it came out. I was just finishing university. I started playing it one afternoon, and next thing I knew, my housemate was knocking on my door and was like, Andy, you ready to come to lectures? And I realized I played it through the night which was the first time that that had ever happened and the first time I ever got sucked into a game like that. And it was the ability to have all of this modification to the cars, which you'd never seen in a game really at that level up until that point. The big speakers in the back, the underglow, the, the nitrous hisses, all that kind of like crazy stuff you could do. And it shaped how I am with cars now. My 350Z has underglow. It has a big speaker in the back. It has interior glow and demon eyes and a starlight headliner and all this crazy stuff that i've put in there because i was building this thing as a homage to need for speed underground 2. but if you've been following this channel for a while you'll know that when it comes to things like gauge and dashboard design i favor simplicity and minimalism and taking away information that's unnecessary now the gauge design in need for speed underground 2 was anything but minimum and anything but quiet when you started the game, you had a choice of three different kinds of gauge as the first ones you could upgrade to. There was the Flames design, the Griffin, and the Tabby. Then as you went through the game, you could get some more normal looking ones. There was Bullseye and Retro and Super Sport. And then there were the ones that had all these like weird, crazy shapes on them. Invader, Phantom, and Circuit. And then the Gold and Diamante Crusted Bling. It was just super cool and still to this day you don't tend to get that level of like crazy gauge customization in a video game and it dawned on me why have i done all this fun stuff with my car with the lights and the sound system and the interior and the wrap and the body kit but i'm putting minimal kind of modern aesthetic gauge designs in there doesn't work what would be better if this car is really a homage to need for speed underground 2 is i should put some of the gauges from the speed on the ground too in there so this week that's what i've been doing and we're going to take a look at how the design is coming together because i've decided to pick probably my favorite one from the game the tabby design featuring this very cutesy kawaii cat it's so dumb but it's really fun and uh, sometimes that has to win out so let's take a look at the boards of how what i've done so far and uh break it down so obviously we need the big screen and the little screen for this design and the big one is done on this esp32 p4 powered 3.4 inch screen from waveshare we've got the iconic kitty face on there with the rpm gauge which uses this weird little marker thing as well as the nitrous gauge that goes across the top though my car doesn't have nitrous in it so i've decided to reuse that as a throttle position sensor so as i'm pushing the accelerator up and down to the floor that should jump up and down i think that's going to be just a really fun little interactive thing that you can use on the car this smaller one the 2.1 inch is built on one of my ultimate gauge boards powered by an esp32 s3 for those of you who have pre-ordered the gauge boards already, the big order is happening literally in the next few days. And if you haven't got them already and you want to know more, you can find out everything at garagetinkering.com. We've got all the boards over there available for pre-order. But like I say, I'm ordering them in the next few days, so you don't have long. If you want to get them, now is the time. This one typically in the game would show your boost level. I don't have a turbo in my 350Z, so decided to swap this one out for coolant temperature and I've just changed the tick markings to reflect that range a little bit better. The process of actually creating these boards is very different to what 
we've usually been doing on this channel when it comes to designing things with LVGL, because typically they're done with, you know, the mix of components from LVGL, which then are all kind of like used to create the design. This one is obviously best not created by coding it. This one's best to create by designing it. So the first thing I had to do to replicate this design was redraw the background images. And I don't claim to be an absolute expert at Illustrator. I've used it for a long, long time, but it's ideal for this kind of design because vector-based design means you can go and tweak and change things like your curves and your thicknesses of your strokes and all those kinds of things really quickly and easily without having to, you know, go back and forth and nothing's too permanent. You can continue to iterate on the design and change it as you tweak things. It was pretty fortunate that in the original design, the markers around the edge go up to, well, the seven markers, which look like it goes up to about seven and a half thousand RPM, which is exactly what my car has. My red line's at 6,600. The top end is 7,500. So the design works perfectly with my RPM. Now, if you were to be wanting to do this for yourself, you might want to change the, the amount of ticks and the angle step between each one of those ticks to make your design work. Like if you've got something that goes to 9,000 RPM, you need more ticks. It's just a simple bit of maths to figure out the distance between each one. If we say the bottom is zero degrees where zero RPM is, the amount of arc we can go around before we hit the very top end in this design is 240 degrees, which is great because 240 is a very divisible number. In my case, I wanted to divide it by seven and a half, which leaves me 32. So each tick is 32 degrees around the arc. Nice when it's a nice whole number. Sometimes when you're trying to figure how to do these things out with coding and science and maths, it can be quite tricky. But solving that trickiness can also be fun, which is a mantra of today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. They have a very wide range of courses on everything from maths and science and programming and artificial intelligence and data science, but they present it in a way that allows it to be fun and entertaining to actually learn things, which is something very close to my heart. I think the best thing about it, though, is the ability to go and set your daily learning goals, which allows you to go and set healthy habits for getting a little bit better at something every day. I would much rather spend 15 minutes of my day learning to get a little bit better at something new that interests me, like data science, than just wasting it sat arguing with strangers on Reddit. If you want to get better in this range of fields, make sure you head over to brilliant.org slash garage tinkering and check out the full range of courses that they've got available. You'll get your first 30 days completely free. Plus, if you sign up for their annual subscription, you'll get 20% off when you use my link. The bit that I think is the coolest bit of this and probably the cleverest bit is the nitrous stroke throttle display over the top because of the weird shaping of it the best way it ended up being to do it was to create the entire image as a png and have that section cut out and then what's actually happening is when it's being built in lvgl there is an arc that is going behind the foreground image that fills up that gap it means we can have the cutaways at both ends and the little wider section all work without having to think about programming anything particularly complex it's just like i say it's like a window that you just see the arc through in the background the needle on the front again is pretty simple you just make the thing full size with full width and align it the correct way and lvgl just has functions in it already where you can use an image as the needle so again makes all that stuff pretty simple one thing you do have to consider when you're doing both the background and the needle because they have that transparency in there is you need to produce the image when you're using lvgl's image converter as a color format that has a transparency in it so you can't just use rgb 565 because that doesn't allow for transparency you have to use something like rgb 565a8 and because a8 is the alpha channel which allows you to put a transparency in there but once you've done it like that, it should work absolutely fine. Just make sure you've got that color profile selected and switched on within your LVConf file when setting up LVGL. But now I've left myself an interesting problem in the fact that I've designed two of these gauges based on the original designs, but I've got six spaces to fill. So 
I need to design for others that feel cohesive without it being too over the top. I don't want a face and a paw on all of them. And I don't want to just pull other designs from the game because I don't feel it'll be cohesive. I need to come up with something. And I'll do that over the next couple of weeks. But I've landed on it. This is the design that's going in my 350. And I think it is going to look really fantastically cool when it's done. There are some additional considerations there though, like I have to have all the regular stuff in this thing that you need on a dashboard. It can't just all be fun and cool. I still need a check engine light and a seatbelt light and indicators and a fuel gauge and all that kind of stuff. It still all has to go into these designs. So figuring that out is going to be an interesting challenge. Also, there's an expansion on this, which I may or may not do, but it depends on you guys. You see, in the game, not only could you use these cool gauges, but you could recolor them. So you could make the kitty red and you can make the little tick marks around the outside blue. And you could customize it depending on what you wanted it to look like. Now, I can do that. And using LVGL's recolor for images, we can make it so that you can do that at runtime or you can do that before you compile it. But in order to do so, the image can't just be one big flat image like it is right now. It needs to be broken down into several layers so that you can then recolor each layer so the parts all work together. That is something I'm willing to do, but only if other people want to use it and think it might be a fun thing to use. There are some concerns around that RAM being the biggest one with lots of large images, but I think we can get away with it on onboard RAM on all of these. So far, it's been fine. Nothing's been too big, but it is definitely something to watch out for. Also, there are 10 designs in the game. I am also willing to make a suite of all of these. So if you guys wanted to use them, you could have the entire suite of designs. Something I'm happy to do, but you're going to have to let me know if you want one of the designs, and if so, which one would you want? Are you a Griffin fan? Are you an Invader fan? Or do you keep it old school and you like to use retro? What is the design that you preferred? So yeah, I know on this channel, we very often talk about centering the way I design my own gauges around quality user experience considerations, good UI design, and clean coding principles. But sometimes we have to just throw all of that out the window just to do something that's fun. And I honestly think I'd be doing myself a disservice if I put something too clean and too minimal into a car that is supposed to be a homage to crazy. I'll still do the clean, minimal designs, obviously, but maybe let's save those for the S4 TEL, whatever, for whatever car is coming uh, pretty soon and next. Oops. Honestly, it feels really cool to bring these things to life and seeing them move around on these screens in front of me. It gives me so much joy. So you gotta love it. I know these things are not going to be to everybody's taste. They're not supposed to be, but that's fine. Anyway, I'm going to go and try and cool down because it is roasting hot today. The temperature has gone up and I'm not happy about it. But whatever you do with the rest of your day, folks, have a wicked one. And I'll see you in the next video, Wednesday at 2 p.m. Think of these beeps. Bye-bye.